the mountain's just gone forever. I believe I'm up on a bald, you know, it's uh, indicated as beauty spot, I believe. I just love that right there. Just all those distant peaks. It really does just go on forever. Down below over here we have a valley. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, Irwin. And uh, all points beyond. Ah, uh, geez, I can't tell what's clouds, what's mountains. I'd say a little of both. A lot of mountains, that's for sure. Wow, beautiful. Well, I do believe I'll be heading down here, dropping down into that gap down in there. You know, it probably has a little bit of a holler. And then I'll be going up. I just can't remember the name of this mountain, but I'll be going up there. And then I guess I'll be going across the back up on the ridge. And then I'll be going up over that way and, uh, geez, and down a couple more miles from there. And uh, I'll call it a day. There's a shelter, I think it's a Cherry Gap shelter. And uh, yeah, and that'll be a good day. Tomorrow's Roan Mountain. What a magical place. And all these red pines. Fraser ferns. I love all the green moss that are just, you know, getting a foothold around the base of the trees. You know, the pine needles are just too, you know, acidy all around the ground floor, but but they've taken hold. It is just just magical. The browns and the greens is just gorgeous. I'm on the summit. The Cherokee call this mountain. Um, in the English, the word is, is white, so I'm not really sure why, but, uh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Well, and here we have the elegant stinkhorn. I actually can smell them, usually, before, that I, before I see them, and, uh, I had picked up the scent about 15 meters ago. And uh, here we have it, and there's the raven horn, uh, s s the raven stink horn that usually comes up in the fall in the, uh, the New York area. And uh, there, uh, you, don't, you can eat them, as in you cannot, and, uh, but you couldn't get past the smell too. They're very, very uh, pungent, let's say. Elegant stink horn. Thank you very much. But here, on the other hand, is a lovely troop of the Cinnabar Red Chanterelles. And, uh, and they're actually quite tasty. Chicken mushroom. The sulfur shell. The chicken of the woods. This is an incredibly fresh, but, uh, but still tender and, uh, and still quite edible. Yes. I would definitely, uh, I definitely would harvest that if, uh, if it was around supper time. Ah, here's your typical uh, flush, a troop of uh, cinnabar red chanterelles extending, you know, really up and out. And this is how they go. And, uh, A lovely collection and quite tasty. And the mother of all Berkeley polypores, right there, baby. Yeah, you can eat them. You want to get them fresh. You don't want to use any oil at all. Oh my god, they just absorb the oil. But uh, I usually pass them up. But you can eat them. I tell you, it's been a, a great year for, for being a fungus. There's been a, an awful lot of. Uh, mushroom activity. Well, there's been an awful lot of uh, rain, and uh, so over here we just have this uh, enormous uh, multi clusters of uh, a poisonous mushroom, uh, quite colorful, called uh, the jack o' lantern, and uh, they I have not witnessed it. Anyway. But uh, they say it glows in the dark, and uh, the smell is quite foul. 
and, uh, and here we have it, the jack-o'-lantern. Greasy Creek, friendly, hostile. Uh, CC is the uh, is the owner, and uh, I've got weather coming in. Hmm. Uh, here we have a a young hemlock stand that uh, never got a chance. Uh, it's completely wiped out. You know, it goes back there quite a ways. But uh, yeah, the woolly adelgid, you know, an aphid uh, type insect, uh, has been devastating the uh, the hemlock forest throughout the whole southern area. I mean, it goes all the way up the east coast, up north, even New York, where I live. But uh, I I really seen a lot of damage, you know, down here in the uh, in the southern states of uh, Appalachia. Hey friends, I'm going to go swagger here. This is a Roan High Knob Shelter. I slept up here. This is the highest shelter. Over 6,000 feet in the entire Appalachian Trail. And uh, it was quite cold. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning now. And it is raining. It's been raining for... Uh, a few hours off and on and I want to get out and I've got 15 miles to put in and uh, something really really strange almost creepy about this place it used to be an old uh, fire um, warden's uh, cabin where I used to live in and uh, there are flies these huge flies see that that swinging string there is full of them and so it's almost, and they're everywhere. It's, they're all, all those little indentations on the wood, all over here. Hard to see with the reflection, and in the trees, all dangling, all those bits dangling there are, are not pine cones, but flies. It's kind of like a Amityville horror cabin couple of young, young local kids were camping out in here with me last night. I was like, oh man, I think this cabin is hot, haunted with all the flies just everywhere. Right? A little hard with the, uh, the reflection here and the, the clouds. We are, the clouds are just blowing in. It's raining. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, and over here, yeah, just flies. Just, that's all flies. And then all all down in here and everything and some are dead some are not and and these are all flies all down in there just all hanging all up in those trees and and all in the ceiling and everything, everything outside nothing inside thank goodness but uh so um realistically it's probably some type of a, a mating ritual and this location seems to be um, like last year in the New York, I even heard in the Pennsylvania area, we were bombarded last summer with stink bugs. And, uh, and this area here seems to be pretty infested with these, these fly type insects. But I just thought I would point it out because it's really even on the cook table here, along, along the edges here, just yeah, honestly, everywhere. Strangest thing I've ever seen. But like I said, there's some, there's an explanation for everything, and I would say that, you know, it's some type of uh, uh, a mating thing where all these insects would gather in one location. For, you know, that's what makes sense to me. But uh, it is still raining. I am itching to get out there. It is very cold on the top of the mountain, but, you know, this is what I do.